Good morning, everyone. I haven't done a video in a long time. Uh, I just took Nina for a walk. Do you want to see her? Hold on. So there she is. Uh, we went for a walk just around the block. Nina, come here. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. She thinks I want to take her to a Come here. Come here. Come here. Hi. Hi. Say hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, yeah, we're out in the garden. And I don't know if you've read some of my um, other posts, um, but so I, I bought, I thought I bought yellow squash, zucchini, cucumbers, and spaghetti squash. And I've been really confused all summer long about what's where. So first I thought I planted the zucchini and the squash near one another and the spaghetti squash in another area. I guess I forgot I bought cucumbers. But at any rate, as the, what I thought was the spaghetti squash was turning into like a huge vining monster, it started developing cucumbers. And I'm like, oh, okay, those are not cucumbers. I mean squash. So I was like, okay, I guess I didn't have spaghetti squash. The um, container was mislabeled. And I've gotten some beautiful cucumbers off of there. In fact, if anybody has any quick uh, pickling recipes, um, I'd love to be able to pickle. I don't know how to do canning or anything. Want to learn, but I'm a show me, teach me person and um, not that adventurous in the kitchen with things like that. Anyway, so then I did get some zucchinis. I had a battle with the squash bugs on the zucchini plant. Um, this year the Japanese beetles and squash bugs are, well, the Japanese beetles are kind of bad. I haven't seen them in years in my garden, but they're here this year. On the basil, on the corn especially. Um, but also, of course, squash bugs. And last year the squash bugs for the end of the summer really destroyed my yellow squash and zucchini. So this year I'm trying to fight back a little bit. Anyway. So then the next plant that started to fruit was a plant that was getting yellow squash on it. But the squash were so big and kind of weird looking that I was like, oh, these aren't squash. Oh, I mean, yellow squash, these are the spaghetti squash. So, oh, I have zucchini and cucumbers and yellow squash, no, no spaghetti squash. Okay, let me show you these yellow squash, hang on. Okay, so we'll go on a quick hunt down in here. Here they come. Look. I'm trying to show you the journey journey down to the squash. Here is this, this, a yellow squash on this plant. Now this thing, I mean, I don't know what that is. But I thought that this was the spaghetti squash. And there's, um, Quite a few of them coming along in there. So um, these, some of them do look kind of more like a traditional yellow squash. So then I was like, oh, okay, well, um, I don't know. I don't know what these are. Well, today when I was in the garden, hang on. Today after our walk, while I was in the garden, I noticed that as I was looking at the um, cucumbers that are taking over my, um, this one planter that I have, or well, more importantly, they're overshadowing my blueberries. Um, hang on a minute, what's that weird light happening? Okay, well, anyway, whatever. So here's the cucumber plant, hang on. So this is the cucumber plant, and I have gotten um, quite a few cucumbers on here. This thing is huge, um, and I know that down in here somewhere, oh, you can see there's a cucumber coming along down in there. Um, I see one kind of um, back, back here in the distance, right there. 
So I do know that for sure this monstrosity is a cucumber plant and you can see that it is pushing its way over into the madness of tomato world that I'm finally getting some green tomatoes on but no red ones. I probably should trim the tomato plant but I'm just gonna leave it. I've got several types of tomatoes on here. Um, here's one. I don't know what this is. And then I have, um, here's some small little tomatoes that are coming along, right? And then there are these kind of like more oblong shaped um, tomatoes in here somewhere, although I don't see them right now. But here's some more of the, the big ones ugh, coming along right in there. All right, so we'll have a nice, there's, there's one more tomato plant, I don't know what it is. And then I've got three nice red cabbages forming. Um, that's an old um, mustard plant from last year. And then I don't know if you can see it very well, this ferny looking thing, I've got asparagus over there. Um, okay, but I'm going on a tangent, hang on a minute. So getting back to the um, to the uh, um, cucumbers, which is what I am supposed to be talking to you about. My goodness, I'm all cut up. I was looking at things this morning, and I noticed that on the cucumber plant, there are these sweet little yellow flowers like this. Um, but let's see if I can zoom in on that beauty right there. I don't know if I can or not. Oh, there it is. Okay. But I noticed this morning while I was looking at the plants that there was also a giant flower like this. Okay, and the color is also different. So I was like, well, what is that? And pulled back and noticed that these leaf shapes, okay, see how they're little softer and rounder than the see that soft it round let's see one kind of like two three four five if you will but if you come over here to these 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 have more like three side one two three and they're more pointy so I was like hey I have two plants <laughs> growing side by side so maybe that is my maybe that is my spaghetti squash so we'll see We'll see what's what's going on. There's my basil that's gone to seed. Here's my blueberry plants that are being mm, basically rudely, rudely covered by the spaghetti squash slash cucumbers. These are Brussels sprout plants that so far don't have any Brussels sprouts on them at all. And again, the um, cucumbers are really kind of taking over and I see these are also getting eaten so I don't know what's doing that um, over here this is a sweet potato that has vined along in the beds and la 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 the corn I'm so excited about this corn it's um, something I just thought would be really cool to grow in the yard um, but I don't know, just never thought I, I could or would. This is the sorrel, it's coming along really nicely. And over here we have a nice cabbage head. This baby's ready to be picked. I might get some fresh cabbage soon. Um, oh yeah, I gotta get at that one, but that one splits. Okay, and then we have beets, okay. I saw one over here that, um, like the leaves were so nice and tall. Oh, here it is. Got a nice tall batch of big leaves, but the beet looks really tiny under there. So we'll see. Um, I think I might pull that one up later on and eat it. There's the corn again. Coming along really well. 
And then lastly, let's just go on ahead, since we're doing a tour and look on the other bed. Here's the remaining three cabbages. These are doing better than the other ones, although I don't know what's going on down in there. There's the back end of the, what I think is, I don't know, what kind of squash? More beets and um, a broccoli head that I probably should have picked a long time ago, but I think I'll pick that and eat that as well a little later on today so that's the garden this year the lettuces I just let go to seed they aren't really good this year um, but I think I might um, plant some for the fall and then last but not least we've got the big girl Mina eating stuff she probably ought not to be eating what are you eating what are you eating Mina what are you eating Hmm? Are you supposed to be eating that? Ugh. What is that in your eyeball? Mina. Mina. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. She's pushing me over. She's 100 pounds now, I think. Well, last vet visit, she was 99.9 .9 pounds, and she'll be a year on August 27th. So she's coming along great. We're all doing well over here. And I hope that everything's going awesome in your neck of the, the woods. Oh, one more thing. Let me show you the elderberries. Okay, so here I am by the elderberry bush. This baby grew up from wild. It's some bird dropped a berry seed there. And for years, I didn't know what it was. Um, I think I reached out on some garden group and asked what it was. And they told me, and I didn't know its benefits at the time. So I'm so happy. I know I've shown other photos of it, but I want you to really see it on video. Hold on. So here it is behind the golf net. It's very tall. Okay. So my head probably comes up to about here. So you can see how much taller that is. Again, going almost up to the top of the um, garage. And <clears throat> It's starting to, uh, let's see if we can get a little closer, uh, starting to form some, some berries. So I'll be keeping a close eye on this um, because I do have um, quite a few, whoops, I do have quite a few nice habitats back here that the birds are in and I do feed the birds. So um, for example, this um, elder tree, I think it's called, that my husband tries to decimate every year that I tell him just leave it alone. Um, but that along with the um, elderberry bush and then this is a lilac bush that blooms every spring. And then coming across the yard quickly, we have a crab apple tree over here. There's lots of trees running down the side of my house that I try to cut away, but they, they grow back. They're those weedy trees. Um, believe it or not, this madness is kind of just like a wild binding rose that I just leave alone every year and it blooms beautifully and then I don't really do anything with it so I probably should because it probably should still be in bloom but if you look in this crab apple tree going up to the top of the crab apple tree for example right let's see right let me put my finger in front of the camera right whoops oh that didn't work <laughs> Well, anyway, what I'm trying to point out is that the rose bush, those are roses. So I don't know, I, I didn't know roses would grow that tall, but they're actually growing up with the support of a crab apple tree all along the um, tree. And then I'll trim that soon. But over here, this is a white mulberry. Um, that I went on ahead and trimmed because my husband kept getting at it. Um, so it's a nice, I tried to keep it um, so that it can provide some, eventually provide some kind of like uh, shelter for us when it's raining and we're standing at the door. Um, lots of other things that I, I need to get, get at. Um, so a lot of stuff to, to dig up and take care of. Um, just haven't really uh, had a really weird busy run of like working every day in a row for 
X, Y, Z days. This is the sage bush that used to be flourishing here, but my husband hates this bush, and it's another bush that he's been going after every year. Sorry, don't mean to call him out like that, but um, we just have, you know, we have different ideas about um, things related to yard and garden. But anyway, that's all. We're all good. Hope you guys are good. And uh, have a really awesome day.